Right now, as a whole, we look pretty good. We've had some moisture. The wheat has come out of dormancy. It's, it's really greened up from those top dress nitrogen applications. So as, as a whole, it looks pretty good. Still short on moisture in northwest Oklahoma, living on borrowed time in southwest Oklahoma. Uh, so we, we look pretty good right now, but we're going to, we're going to need some more rain. Uh, we're, we're really just three or four 80 degree days with 25 mile an hour winds uh, away from the wheat going backwards and starting to turn blue. Uh, so if we continue to get this rainfall, these cooler temperatures, uh, we're setting ourselves up for a nice wheat crop. How are the planted acres compared to last year's crop? They're off a little bit from last year. We're at about 5.1 million acres this year. I think a lot of our farmers or several did some double cropping last year, maybe planted some uh, double crop soybean or, or grain sorghum. Some of those acres didn't get planted. Some of them went in late and the wheat is kind of small coming out of dormancy. For, for those acres that are small, these temperatures in the 60s and 70s with moisture uh, is just what that wheat needs to, to play catch up. And what makes a good Oklahoma wheat variety? I mean, we, we, we have extremes. We have no rain, we have a lot of rain, yeah, temperatures it, all over the place. In Oklahoma, a wheat variety has, has to do it all. Uh, so you take a variety like Duster. One of the reasons Duster has been such a success is because of its tillering ability. So that makes it a good grazing wheat and it has the ability to compensate uh, for, for drought and things like that because it produces so many tillers. Uh, and you balance that out with a variety like Ruby Lee that is kind of a racehorse variety. Has some drought tolerance, but uh, really it excels in situations where it can really tap into some top end yield potential. Uh, so what I like to see producers do is mix those acres. Uh, you don't, don't put all of your eggs in, in one basket and this year is, is a prime example of that. I, I think we will have some varieties rise to the top this year. Last week we had uh, Bob Hunger on talking about some, some, some rust moving into Oklahoma. Let's talk about some other things that may be coming up across the state. Well, the rust is still the primary issue that we're worrying about, stripe rust and, and leaf rust. The conditions have continued to be favorable for both of those diseases. Uh, so this could be a year where we have, uh, where we have a, quite a bit of leaf rust and stripe rust out there. Right now we're kind of in the interim. We're a little late for those early applications for a split fungicide application. The flag leaf will be out soon in southern Oklahoma. So in, in most circumstances, we might be better off just to wait for a flag leaf application of a fungicide. Again, the key there, we talked about varieties, is knowing your variety. Uh, Ruby Lee being a, a prime example of a variety that really needs a fungicide many years. Uh, something like Gallagher or Iba, two of our, our newer varieties, have a very good disease resistance package. You could probably get by without a fungicide on those. So know your variety and know its disease rating before you spray. And, and, and you put out a blog uh, on a regular basis. Let's talk about what's, what's in the blog. Well, we try and keep producers updated as far as foliar disease in the state of Oklahoma. We put a lot of Dr. Hunger's information on there. We update producers most recently on first hollow stem and just the overall condition of the wheat crop. If I get more than two or three calls about a problem such as green bugs or something like that, we try and get information out there on what to look for, what to scout for, and then links to a little more in-depth information. Uh, you can also access things like variety characteristics uh, on, the, on that blog, so that's uh, really helpful to know which variety or how your variety is going to behave. Okay, thank you much, Jeff. We'll check in with you here in a couple weeks again, see how the crop's doing then. And for a link to that blog, go to our website, sunup.okstate.edu.